good to share the same platform with uh, Senator Janet Rice uh, two days in a row. Uh, not just uh, Janet, but, the, but her party, the Greens, uh, have been a voice for uh, oppressed people all around the world. I would like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of this land, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. I would like to acknowledge the elders past and present. As a Tamil, I have come here today to extend our solidarity with the Sikh community. We are sorry for your losses and the Tamil people all over the world will continue to speak out against the past injustices and the injustices that you continue to face at the hands of the Indian state. understand genocide more than any. People of Tamilulam, northeast of Sri Lanka, have faced 60 years of war and genocide at the hands of successive Sri Lankan governments. A genocide that was partly sponsored by the Indian state. I am a witness to the Sri Lankan government's crimes in the 1990s. In the 1990s, the Sri Lankan government propagated a war for peace campaign in which they aimed to inflict massive casualties on the Tamil population. I'm from a small village called Nagakovil in the northeast of Sri Lanka. I have witnessed deliberate bombings of uh, churches, schools, and temples by the Sri Lankan Air Force. On 22nd of September 1995, my school was bombed by the Sri Lankan Air Force seven times. On that day, my 14-year-old brother was cut in half by the Sri Lankan Air Force. We picked up our six-year-old cousin in pieces. Two of my other cousins also died on that day. As an 11-year-old boy, I had to witness my classmate hanging on a tamarind tree by his intestines. Friends and comrades, this injustice was not only carried out by the Sri Lankan state, but it was sponsored by the Indian government. In 2009, Sri Lankan government uh, committed a genocide by killing over 100,000 Tamils in the final days of the war. And according to a Tamil Catholic bishop, over 146,000 Tamils remain unaccounted for. Five years on, the genocidal acts of the Sri Lankan government has not stopped. What is happening in Tamililam today is an unimaginable psychological torture for our people. Apart, apart from the physical harm they subject to with, even, with impunity even as we speak. There are many Tamil refugees in the Australian community who have horrible uh, memories of the injustices they faced four years after the so-called end of war. There is a refugee living in regional Victoria, a refugee who was sexually assaulted by the Sri Lankan army men in June 2012, at the end of 2012 for six months. Every time uh, he refused to have sex with the Sri Lankan army men, they would come and insert a PVC uh, pipe through his anus and they would insert a barbed wire through the pipe to torture him. And when he fled to Australia as a refugee, his wife was taken by the army in June 2013 and she was gang raped. 
Now she's living in a refugee camp in Tamil Nadu, India, fighting for her life. International players, including India, the United States, know this. But they maintain silence to protect their interest, just like the way they maintain silence with the Sikh genocide. As oppressed people, we need to unite. We should look out for each other. We are stronger united than being on our own, talking to within our community. Let us not allow our politicians in Australia to act in support of brutal regimes that uh, wipes out First Nation people all around the world. As an oppressed, it is our duty to cry out for justice. Those Tamil people who died at the hands of the uh, Sri Lankan army and the Sri Lankan state cannot cry out for justice. The Sikh people who were killed by the Indian state in 1984 cannot cry out for justice. Sikhs and the Tamils, the, those who survived the atrocities, cannot cry out for justice because they are living in fear in open prisons and in torture camps in Sri Lanka and India. As free men and women, it is our duty and let's cry out for justice for the oppressed people all around the world. Thank you.